good morning my dear students today's topic of discussion is beta lactamase inhibitors these agents resemble beta lactam antibiotics only structurally but do not possess any significant antimicrobial action so they are not belonging to the group of beta lactam antibiotics they bind irreversibly to the catalytic site of susceptible beta lactamases produced by bacteria to prevent hydrolysis of penicillins hence they are also known as suicidal inhibitors they can inhibit plasmid mediated beta lactamases which are responsible for transferring drug resistance such as those produced by methicillin sensitive staph aureus h influenzae Hemophilus ducri, E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, so many other examples. When you will see a microbiological uh, ESBL susceptibility test coming from the Department of Microbiology, uh, you, you will receive uh, the picture uh, of this drug test. Like this, you see R R stands for resistance and S S stands for sensitive. So just uh, beside each and every drug, the term R or S is being mentioned. So on the basis of that, and thinking about the nature of the organism, you have to select the proper, appropriate antibiotic. And if you see that some, uh, I mean most of the cases. Uh, you, you are not getting a single agent which is probably uh, showing you uh, sensitivity towards a particular organism then you may think about adding beta lactamases with that antibiotic so that the situations can be controlled in a better way so there are basically three uh, beta lactam inhibitors available in the market one is clavulinic acid it is derived from streptomyces clavigerus the sulbactam which is a semi synthetic preparation and a tazobactam structural analog of sulbactam beside this there is one more uh, invented very recently that is called avibactam and they are combined with their respective beta lactam antibiotics on the basis of their pharmacokinetic property and their usefulness in a particular clinical trial or in multiple clinical trials and here in this picture you see the site of penicillinase action where it's breaking the beta lactam ring and by breaking the beta lactam ring it is actually destroying the structure of penicillin group of antibiotics or other beta lactam group of antibiotics whereas in the red rectangle three drugs were mentioned clavulinic acid sulbactam and tazobactam you can add one more avibactam with that all four of them are basically inhibiting this penicillinase enzyme and by inhibiting they themselves are being hydrolyzed and they themselves are not being used in the future so it's a kind of suicidal inhibition but they are also not allowing penicillinase to act on that particular beta lactam ring beta lactamases were first discovered in 1940 and originally termed as penicillinase they were short acting beta lactamase formation and then these enzymes hydrolyze the beta lactam ring deactivating the drug but are not covalently bound to the drug at protein bounding penicillin binding protein site 
three classes A, C and D catalyze the reaction using a serine residue. The B class of metallo beta lactamases catalyze the reaction using zinc. So these are the differences between the different types of classes of beta lactamases which are uh, used for various purpose. And beta lactamase inhibitors are basically inhibiting these beta lactamase enzyme. Beta lactamase production is the most common mechanism of resistance. Some such those produced by Staph aureus, Haemophilus, E. coli are relatively narrow spectrum called penicillinase and cephalosporinase. Other beta lactamases produced by Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Enterobacter and extended spectrum hydrolyze both cephalosporins and penicillins. Carbapenems are highly resistant to hydrolysis by penicillinase and cephalosporinases but they are hydrolyzed by metallo-beta lactamase and carbapina mases. So all of them are susceptible to some kind of enzyme uh, synthesized by these virulent bacteria. Beta lactamase inhibitors currently available in three clinical form. One I have added uh, that is avibactam with that, which are combined with beta lactams and it is produced through fermentation. These molecules bind irreversibly to beta lactamase but do not have good activity against penicillin binding proteins. The rings are modified to break open after acylating the enzyme. Addition of clavulanic acid with penicillin uh, or amoxicillin is probably the most common formulations used in the clinical practice. So let's see which are the common combinations used in our common day clinical practice, the amino penicillins. Uh, amoxicillin and clavulanic acid combination where the amoxicillin is the beta lactam antibiotic clavulanic acid is basically a beta lactamase inhibitor ampicillin and sulbactam um, this is again the ampicillin is the antibiotic sulbactam is the beta lactamase inhibitor the extended spectrum penicillins like piperacillin which is combined with tazobactam ticaracillin which is combined with clavulanate, piperacillin and tazobactam TDS combinations are also being effective uh, in a dose of thrice daily regimen and beside this there is another combination that is ceftazidim and avivactam. Addition of clavulanic acid with amoxicillin extends the antimicrobial spectrum of amoxicillin against beta lactamase producing bacteria like streptopneumonia, Haemophilus influenzae, Morexella, methicillin sensitive Staph aureus, beta lactamase producing anaerobes, E. coli, proteas. All beta lactamase inhibitor combinations require dose adjustment in patients with renal insufficiency because they are excreted by kidney and all these combinations ampicillin, lethalbactam, amoxicillin, clavulanate, piperacillin, tazobactam all of them are fixed dose combinations. Really we can see the side effects of uh, GI intolerance, stomatitis and rashes but uh, hypersensitivity reaction as you all know it's common with penicillin group of drugs or beta lactam group of drugs so this can be always uh, anticipated while prescribing this kind of formulation.
so this is uh, the combinations common combinations which are used in the clinical practice amoxicillin clavulanic acid ampicillin salbactam ceftazidim abibactam which is the latest one piperacillin tazobactam cefepirazone salbactam and ticarcillin clavulanic acid out of this salbactam is structurally similar to clavulanic acid and is combined in equal proportions with ampicillin and given im or iv root parenteral powder for reconstitution is available in 125 mg 250 mg and 500 mg and 1.2 g vials tazobactam is combined with piperacillin in a fixed dose combination of 3 g of piperacillin and 250 mg of tazobactam and is given parenterally every 6 hourly in pseudomonal infection clavulanic acid itself is produced by streptomyces clavulligeris having poor antimicrobial effect it is combined with amoxicillin and is effective against beta lactamase producing staphylococci gonococci e coli amoxicillin and potassium clavulanate are available in fixed dose combination preparations of 500 mg and 875 mg of amoxicillin with 125 mg of clavulanate the last one is avivactam which is basically a new beta lactamase inhibitor that inhibits wide range of beta lactamases particularly those produced by pseudomonas serigenesis it improves the antimicrobial effects of ceftazidim ceftazidim is a anti pseudomonal cephalosporin avivactam is available in a combination of 2 g of ceftazidim and 500 mg of avivactam and is indicated to treat complicated intra abdominal infection along with metronidazole it is also indicated in complicated cases of uti including pyelonephritis the organism sensitive to the combination include e coli rhebsiella pneumoniae pseudomonas aeruginosa proteus the dose of the preparation of ceftazidim and avivactam is around 2 g and 500 mg respectively and is given intravenously as infusion for a period of 2 hours and continued at 8 hourly interval for a period of 10 to 14 days so these in brief about the pros and cons of beta lactamase inhibitors which are not beta lactam in nature but they are always playing their role to help beta lactam antibiotics for killing those harmful bacteria and these kind of combinations or drug drug interactions are beneficial in nature so that's the end of this presentation and wait till the next one coming after few days thank you